Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and this is going to be a field report for what's happening in my current FLGS game. So, friendly local game shop. So, I'm running uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. Um, I use Lego, and I use Magic the Gathering, and I use Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. Uh, it's a two hour game, uh, and we just finished uh, session eight. Uh, and the game's been going really well. Uh, but we ran into a problem with the FLGS. So, um, so basically, uh, this happened one time before, I think about two months ago, where um, we go to the FLGS, and the FLGS is great, and they give us this really nice space to run the game, right? So the FLGS we go at is, it's actually, so let's get specific. So it is a friendly local game shop. The staff is very friendly. And it's a really nice space. That it's very clean. And they have room for probably 60 people in there. And I think there's 10 tables that each six feet, uh, uh, fit six, right? So what's interesting, what I want to talk about today, is the hierarchy of the FLGS, right? So I have two FLGSs near me. And when I run and when I go to run a Dungeons and Dragons game, I have three choices. I can run it in my own home, okay? I can run it at um, at the I don't. I'm gonna say higher end FLGS. It's in a more rich uh, area and it's literally larger, right? Um, but that place, that FLGS, has has its own hierarchy. So I'm gonna say the high end uh, FLGS, and I'm gonna say the quality FLGS. Neither one of these is low end. They're both extremely good. But one is a higher end FLGS. It's just, it's literally in a richer area. It has richer, it has a richer own. Man, you know, I was going to say it has a richer owner. I could be wrong about that. Um, I think both of, both of these owners, I know both of these owners, both of these owners have done extremely well uh, and are very, and have um, literally, uh, both of them employ their own sons um, and the other one employs his sons and his daughters. Both of them, I think, have absolutely made a million to five million over the last 20 years uh, at these FLGSs. Uh, no question about it, right? Um, and they're both highly profitable. They're both profitable, right? And actually, I wouldn't know highly profitable because one of them, I, one of them uh, actually owns, like, uh, he moved his physical store from one place to another. And he brought out a for realsy slabbed bat uh, number one Batman. That's like twenty, and that was like ten years ago, right? And it was twenty grand then. I think I, I think it might have been thirty or forty thousand dollars even then, right? So this this guy got bank like, it, it, but both of them, so the higher quality FGL FLGS and the and the quality the higher quality FLGS and the standard quality FLGS, um, they both uh, have really nice spaces. But they have different hierarchies. So let's talk about this. And, uh, and so, and let me not bury the lead here. So the problem is, I went to my FLGS, and this has happened twice in three months. I went to FLGS. We start at 7.30. My players are always there when I arrive, right? And, uh, and twice, the FLGS has been full, right? Now, why was it full? Well, at the standard FLGS, it's actually a Magic the Gathering shop. That is, it's a number one priority, right? And like, if you roll in there in the middle of a pre-release and you try to bust out a D&D &D game, they will literally kick you out. They will be very nice about it, but they'll be like, you can get to step in, right? Like every seat in here is going to be filled, um, with pre-release, you know, stuff. Now in the old days, they were jammed full, right? Now, like a pre-release actually, believe it or not, they, they move a ton of cards, but they actually don't, uh, actually pre-release um, physical attendance is actually going down, right? But they have events where they, they put on this event and it's it's a banger and, like, they fill the stores, right? Now, the other thing is they have, like, three... They have a, this The standard quality FLGS has literally, like, three different uh, local shops, right? All within... One of them's, like, 10 miles away from me, maybe eight... Uh, one of them's like 15 and one of them's like 25, right? And so because they have all those, they don't even fill all their all their pre-release, right? But my point is they will legit kick you out, 
right? Like, and so and I think that's very interesting, right? Like, if they get full, they will kick you out from Magic. Period. Like, you're there. And where does Dungeons and Dragons fall on this FLGS's list, right? So, one to be clear, they sell F L G. They sell D and D at the FLGS. They have a, they have like half of the of the standard stock is on the shelf, right? And they have an entire display that actually they have two or three displays that's entirely Dungeons and Dragons. But it's not even, it's maybe 10% of the stock space they have is dedicated to Dungeons and Dragons, right? Max, right? And you and we will get kicked out. And so what happened both times is I actually hold my, uh, my game night on Thursdays, and that is Yu-Gi-Oh! night. On any standard Yu-Gi-Oh! night, there's plenty of space. There, half the tables are taken by Yu-Gi-Oh! character players. Half of the tables are empty, and we we're near the back, and we have a whole six you know six you know six seat table for us, right? So no big deal, right? Um, and so, but there are tournaments that come up, right? And I don't care about Yu-Gi-Oh, so like I don't know when these tournaments are coming up, and if even a local tournament spins up. There is such a huge, strong Yu-Gi-Oh! community at this one FLGS that the place can fill immediately, right? And it's Yu-Gi-Oh! night, so it's not appropriate for us to take the table. So this was the second time this happened in three months. So I go back, and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, it's our D&D night. But there was two or three tables. There was enough room for us, but it was so loud because they were like it was three quarters filled and it was just super loud and it was Yu-Gi-Oh night and for some strange reason bog standard board game night there were people playing taboo I was like what you know and so we had to quick take the game and take it back to my house right now I had warned my wife about this the first time this happened and so it was no problem I just you know gave my wife a call she's like no problem you guys can come back and but Everybody had to, you know, get, you know, get in their cars, go back to my place. It went great. It went really, really well, right? Um, it was a really good session. But at the end, I flaked and I totally forgot to offer people rides home. So then I was like, oh crap! Like four people are walking out the door. I was like, hey, I'll take one of you guys. So like, it wasn't four people jammed in a car, and so I took one of the other. So there were like two or three cars, and you know, so different people had to go into different areas, and so some rides needed to make. It worked out great. There were no problems, but we've reached a point, right? This is, you know, the second time in three months. We have definitely reached a point where we can't reliably know that that space is available, and that's a bummer. That is a real bummer. So uh, what I've what I've announced is that I'm going to cap this uh, this game at 11 sessions, right? So we're going to run for three more sessions, and then I don't know what we're going to do after that, right? Because that because um, I know I don't. I know we don't have a reliable space for this game, right? And I do, and the reason this game came about was like this one player. I was like, I would really love to run some D and D. He's like, bet, and he filled the table, right? And I and I really am incredibly thankful for that. And it's worked out great. I've made some new friends, and it's and I really like this group of people, um, and. Uh, they seem to understand me, and I, I think I am a challenging person to to like. I'm intense and out of it. There's just no way around that, and and I don't get along great with everybody, you know. And so I could I could be a you know I could be a handful, right? And so this group seems to understand me, and and we're moving forward, and I'm incredibly blessed to be gaming with them, and. Uh, but I also really kind of, I was kind of stunned and bummed that the FLGS got to a point where we could not go there reliably, right? And so that means we really don't have a space for the game, right? Which is not a reliable space for the game, right? So that that's kind of a bummer. And that comes because of priority, right? Like this place, they will, their priority is Magic first, any other card game second, D&D third, and frankly, I think this place, Warhammer fourth. Like they they would not kick us out for Warhammer players, right? Um, and um, but I could be wrong about that. The other place, the high end FLGS, the other the higher end 
FLGS. None, neither one of these places low, are low end. I, I want to make that really. We have a very nice um, FLGS, uh, which actually has great stock, very clean, lots of great tables. And then we have just a stellar FLGS, which has comic books, Warhammer, um, and, and in this order, in this order, Warhammer, comic, this is their priorities. Warhammer, comic books, um, board games, and then D and D, right? Like, so we could get kicked out of there if it was filled with board gamers. If it was filled with war, they would def kick us out if we were war, if, you know, if if we were playing Warhammer. And it's not first come first serve. It's like it's the people who are actually, um, you know, um, it is very much the people who are actually. Um, I, I guess really supporting the the people who are supporting the place the most, right? So I, I think that's really kind of interesting, and um, yeah, that, that's the best way to describe it. So a little bit of a bump in the road, right? And uh, but it's been a great campaign, and I think we're gonna have a good finish. I don't like to telegraph my finishes. I like to you know kind of let it come to a narrative finish, but. But I, I also feel bad, you know, inviting people to show up and, and the space isn't available, right? So, but I really feel fortunate about what's happened from this game. Um, it's been, it's allowed me to really reestablish and reform my friendship, uh, you know, with, you know, my, um, you know, with my titanium player. And I have a great, uh, you know, I'm building a relationship and a friendship with, uh, with this storm player, storm dungeon master. Um, and I've gotten exposed to a fantastic new board game that I would not have had access to, um, you know, uh, through the Acacia player. And, um, it's, it is really, uh, really wild. And, uh, you know, and I've gotten to spend more time with the iron player. It, it's really a big deal. I'm very, very grateful for this, but I just wanted to kind of, I, I wanted to talk, talk to you guys about, about this do your FLGSs have a hierarchy, right? When space fills, what happens? Also, um, do, does space fill? Like, it could be... I live in the Philadelphia area. We got a lot of people here. And we got people with money here, right? And so, and, uh, and you know, and so FLGSs can fill. They can fill with a specific uh, culture, with a specific community. Does that happen where you're at? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.